time. What is going on, Headliner Nation, Jake Fantasy Headliners? Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today as we head into the weekend for Week 5 Fantasy Football. We got some end-of-the-week news, some pristine auction mystery items, some show-us-your-teams, a lot of good stuff here in this show. There are timestamps down below, but man, I don't know about you, but I am ready for the weekend. I'm, I'm worn down a little bit. This will be our 65th video in the last 33 days. Tons of content here to start the year, and hopefully you've all enjoyed it. I know we're seeing a ton of likes out there on the videos, a lot of new members, a lot of new subscribers here to the channel, so thank you so much for the support here throughout the first month. But now, we're heading into the weekend. We're going to really start ramping things up here, heading into week five, because a lot of us need to make a huge run here, middle of the season, to make sure we're set up for a good spot going into the fantasy playoffs. So let's go ahead and start off with some end-of-the-week news, and there's actually been quite a few things that have happened even since we had our injury video update just a couple hours ago don't forget though we do have a london game this weekend don't forget whether you set your alarm to wake up early to make sure that you check it before you go to bed the new york giants green bay packers are scheduled for 9 30 a.m eastern time kickoff on sunday in london don't forget about that how about dawson knox he will be ruled out for the Buffalo Bills, we also have Isaiah McKenzie, technically still in the concussion protocol, but is limited in practice, so has a chance to play now this weekend. Kyle Pitts is not playing this weekend, which definitely makes our decision-making process a little bit easier, because now he can't really burn us in our lineup, right? At least we know ahead of time that we can plug and play someone else that'll probably outscore Kyle Pitts at this point. How about being prepared for a Tyreek Hill replacement? That's right, right now... Tyreek Hill is questionable to play. Now, sounds like he's going to make it, but you need to make sure you have a backup plan just in case you're planning on starting Tyreek Hill. Zay Jones, back in the lineup for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You may be sitting there going, Jake, why do I, do I really care about Zay Jones? If you have Christian Kirk, you should care about Zay Jones because when Zay Jones is in the lineup, that's what really opens up the possibilities for moving Christian Kirk throughout the offense and really gives us those bigger fantasy days. So having Zay Jones back, Helps Christian Kirk for all you owners out there. How about Chris Godwin? He is off the injury report. He is good to go. Same thing with Deontay Johnson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. T. Higgins, not so much. He is officially questionable here for this weekend. You need to make sure you have another backup plan in place, similar to what we talked about with Tyreek Hill. Maybe you have Tyler Boyd on your bench. If that's the case, if Higgins doesn't play, Boyd becomes somebody who definitely has a lot more fantasy value with no Higgins in the lineup. Daniel Jones is going to be under center for the New York Giants. I know, I'm not overly excited about it either. Really what helps Daniel Jones is his rushing upside. Is that going to be limited with the injury to the ankle that he'll be playing on? Even though he's good to go, we may see some of those limitations. He's not a fantasy option for me here this week. Andy Dalton, though, is once again going to start for the New Orleans Saints. Jameis Winston, doubtful to play. We kind of expected this, though, right? Given Jameis a little bit of time to get healthy, Andy Dalton didn't look half bad last week. Rashad Bateman will not be in the lineup this weekend. He is out for the Baltimore Ravens. Make sure he is not in your lineup. Michael Thomas will not be there for Andy Dalton. He has been ruled out as well. Fire up Chris Olave once again. How about Bailey Zappi going to be the quarterback for the New England Patriots this week? Now, wouldn't it be... The 2022 thing, if Bailey Zappi just goes out there and has a great week five, that would be so 2022. However, I still think they're highly dependent on their running game here this weekend. And Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, those are the guys that I want in this offense. And then lastly, David Montgomery, still questionable to play. If I had to guess, even if he does play, it's not going to be a full set of snaps. With the way that Khalil Herbert has been playing, he's really earned the right to be out there, especially with a limited David Montgomery, if he even plays. Best case scenario for fantasy football-wise... He just sits again, and everybody who has Herbert knows that he's going to be the guy once again here this week. But that's going to be the end of the week news. Things that we did not overly cover in the other 11 shows we've probably already done here this week. But now is the time where we get to dip into the old pristine auction box. And a lot of people want to know, how do they get into these giveaways? It's super simple. We've been talking about it for 18 months now. All you have to do is head over to pristineauction.com. There's a link down below in the description. You sign up for a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. You use referral code headliners when you do so. They're going to put a $10 credit into your account in case you do want to purchase something. And then you're eligible for all of our giveaways this entire year. 
That's really all you have to do in order to be eligible for these. Other than that, it's the luck of the draw, right? Because they're all randomly chosen each and every week. We'll do giveaways there on Discord. We'll have them here in videos throughout the week. So make sure you're paying attention to those. And then you're going to be good to go entered in with some of the good things we have. They've already given me a heads up that they're sending me another couple boxes for the rest of the year. And they told me to get ready. So I don't really know what that means. But you want to make sure you get that account signed up now if you haven't already. So the two items that I'm pulling out of the box here this week... We haven't done a helmet in a while. And the helmets take up a lot of space in my office. Let's do a helmet. How about how about this helmet right here? Can you see what it is? No, you can't really see what it is. It's a black helmet. But who is on this helmet? Well, let's just open it up and find out. Because one of the giveaway items here this week is going to be a signed alternate black it's hot right there right i mean i know i'm an arizona cardinals fan and i would like to keep it but i'm a man of the people this is a signed zach Ertz alternate black cardinals helmet right there and that thing is sick got the red cardinal right there signed by zach Ertz certificate of authenticity right here through jsa you can see the signature overall a sweet helmet right here totally sweet love this helmet right here the, the black and the it just makes the red pop right make sure you got that free account signed up we're going to be giving this away shortly and then how about we also do how about we do one of the uh, highest scoring running backs in all of fantasy football even though he's not very efficient i know there's a whole lot of fans out there that say who day on a weekly basis you got right here a signed come on Art. look at this certificate of offense you know it's joe mixon still right there the 28 cincinnati bengals signed by joe mixon right there got that certificate of authenticity covering can i get it out of the way that damn thing don't want to move but anyway you can see it right here a signed authentic joe mixon jersey another item we're going to be giving away here pretty soon so make sure you stay tuned. Now, typically this is the time in the episode where we throw it over to Tater to do a weather update, but honestly, there's no weather to really talk about this weekend, which is great after the last few weeks of what we had. So no major weather concerns at this time for any of the games, nothing to overly worry about. So I gave Tater the week off. It's one less person I have to pay for a week around here. And all he wanted to do was sit there and record himself drinking beer anyway. So uh, he got the week off, but no worries. The doc didn't. It's time for week five, show us your teams. All right, Ethan, here we go. Week five, it's time for show us your teams. Now, I am going to start it off by saying this. Last week at the end of show us your teams, you had a challenge saying you wanted to see more color. People blatantly ignored you last week, Ethan, because honestly, there wasn't a lot of color. We got some submissions to go through, but not a lot. Of, a lot of people just said, no, I, mean, I ain't listening to the doc this week. Well, I hope they listen to my injury show where I told you to play TJ Hawkinson. I hope they're listening to my fantasy advice at a minimum. <laughs> at a minimum. Not so much to show us your team advice, as long as the fantasy advice is being listened to, right? All right, well, let's, let's go ahead and kick it off here, and let's go with the first one. This is Cassius Thompson. Now, what really drew my attention to this, and I don't even know if you, you noticed it or not, it's on a clipboard. Interesting. So to, to me, it seems like, Dude has his life, and he's walking around with a clipboard. You know, I mean, who has a clipboard, a clipboard handy? Only people that are organized. So organized, Jake. And it's the only piece of paper on this clipboard, by the way. So it's on. This is number one priority to him right now. He's walking around work right now, pretending to be like focused on other things, and he's really just writing down his roster for us to critique it. So, bonus points to Cassius Thompson, who is in a ten-team PPR, is currently one in three, and has the straightest arrows I've ever seen. Do you think he used a ruler? Well, I don't know. The big one's kind of squiggly. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. I guess, the, I guess the tip is squiggly. The tip is a little squiggly. You're the right. smaller arrows, not, not as squiggly. Um, yeah. Less they are room for squiggles. In yeah, they're flying. I guess his team name here is Underdog with two Gs. Um, 
His starters is on an arrow as well, but that arrow is nowhere near, you know, perfectly horizontal. Um, yeah. He's got Joe Burrow. I think okay. that says Alvin Kamara. The the Amara is super tiny, by the way. Yes, very little A's. Yeah, very yeah. little Amara right there. Uh, we got yeah. Brees Hall, T. Higgins, Deontay Johnson, TJ Hawkinson, Curtis Samuel, the Eagles, but he's trying to pick up the Bucks, he says, okay. and Graham Gano. Okay. Now, his bench is also on the same trend vertically by that line. So at least hmm. he's somewhat consistent where he's got Godwin Connor, Juju, DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert, Njoku, Madison, and Dak Prescott on his IR. Ethan, what is your initial take on this team? Horrible injury luck so hmm. far. Just really bad. I mean, you got Godwin. James Connor's been banged up. DeAndre Swift is hurt. I mean, Alvin Kamara has missed time. Just really, the whole squad is a little banged up, especially at the running back position. I I do have some questions just from a okay. starting standpoint, I okay. guess. Um, the good news is I think you're good with Godwin. He can probably get put back in your lineup now. Uh, looks to be healthy, getting a good target share. Do you put him <sighs> over Higgins, Johnson, or Curtis Samuel? I, I think Johnson. I feel like Johnson – or, or Samuel, Johnson or Samuel. I look at it this way, and I know you're a Steelers fan, so I know it's hard for you to even say Deontay Johnson, but I think I agree because I feel like Kenny Pickett's going to start focusing on George Pickens a little bit more, and maybe we don't see the volume going to Deontay Johnson. And I like Curtis Samuel this week because there's no Jahan Dotson. So I kind of feel yeah. as long as T. Higgins is healthy, and I'm sure you'll cover that uh, in your injury video, uh, but T yeah. Higgins, I know somebody who's a little bit banged up, but if T Higgins is good, I'm leaving him, he, leaving him in the lineup and I'm switching Godwin and Deontay. Yeah, I think that's probably where I would go to. Um, I really want to try to get Khalil Herbert in, but my sources are telling me that David Montgomery is probably coming back in some capacity. So I, if David get Montgomery gets ruled out, then I think you have to put Herbert in um if not but for who do you put him in you put him over Brees hall probably kamara i feel like kamara has been banged up he's not producing he's still hurt missed last week i just i don't know man i'm having a hard time time trusting any of these running backs i feel like this is a team that uh the arrow is pointing up on it because i do think you're gonna get swift back here in the next for couple sure. weeks i think godwin is going to progressively get healthier now um, I still think Juju is fine, especially in a PPR. The team as a whole is not bad. It's just bad injury luck to start the year. Right. I would not panic um, yet, but I do think that, you know, you might have to be a little bit uh, skimpy here for the next couple of weeks until some of these starters get back. All right, give it a grade, Ethan. What's the grade? Oh, man, if I had seen this team in week one, I'd have probably gave it a solid A. But knowing what I know now from an injury perspective, I, I'm going to go with like a solid B. I think there's there's still hope here. The pieces are there. Just needs a little bit of health uh, luck coming in. And I still think he can be competing. Maybe want to make a move at some point uh, to show up that flex spot. That's Curtis Samuel. I don't think it's going to get it done for you week to week, but uh, for right now, he's kind of your best option. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with a solid B as well, but the trending to get to like a low-end A once he's back to full health, I think yeah. it's a team, like you said, that can get that get that potential later on the season once they get uh, once they get healthy. How about the next one here? We have Fantasy Football Goat, and he has some color here, Ethan. He added some color. I love it. You love the color. The drawings, honestly – are borderline really good. They're pretty good. <laughs> like when you look at certain things, you realize like, wow, that was actually pretty. Like to me, this is, you want to know the weirdest thing? This is how weird I am, Ethan. When I saw all this artwork right here, can you guess what the first thing I noticed with these pictures that I thought was really good? Was really good? Yeah, like the was... first thing that drew my attention to these pictures are like, wow, this is really good. Hmm. The towels, I feel like the towels are a nice touch. The towels are a nice touch, but I was looking at the feet. Feet have to be one of the oh, hardest things to draw. Feet are tough. Shoes. Yeah, feet are tough to draw. Yeah, but I mean, he's even got like the cleats on. I mean, overall, great work. And his team name is CD's Nuts. So honestly, you know, CD Lamb was going to be involved here, which he is. I mean, overall, great artwork. 
I, I like it. I mean, the, the font even, Ethan, is not normal. This is not normal yeah. font. This is like fancy cursive. Bubble cursive? Is that what we're looking at right now? Is it bubble cursive? Bubble cursive? I didn't even know you could bubble cursive. I, I ain't never even seen that before. George. I don't even care about the team anymore. This is automatically an A already. I don't even have to look at the players. Bubble cursive? That is so many Dude. bonus points. That's huge bonus points for he bubble. He even cursive. did our Twitter handles in bubble cursive. I love it. This guy. This it's guy. Just, this is a guy beautiful. right here. Right. It's just a really pretty art. You could frame this. Like it. Mm, I don't you know, know if I go that far. Well, you could he could frame it if he wanted to. Okay. If he wins a chip, I'd probably frame it. Yeah. I mean, I I probably could. I would make sure that it was on like a a, a solid piece of like canvas or something, like a, a great piece of of like yeah, cardstock type stuff. You know, I don't know if yeah. I just have it like on a normal piece of printer paper. So yeah. I see what uh, football you're going go. If you could go ahead and recreate this on some on some high grade stock uh, card stock, man, you could have set yourself a framed picture in the house because this is awesome. All right, I, I guess we'll look at the team, Ethan. I suppose. So it's CD's nuts. So he's got to have CD Lamb. He does have CD Lamb, so that's a good thing. Also has Jalen Hurts. I can't get off. I can't get over the bubble. The bubble cursive. The Ethan. bubble cursive, man. I'm that reading is, this going. That like, has to take it has forever. To it had well. to take a long time uh yeah. derrick henry okay aaron jones good cd lamb michael Pittman, the mooth Cortland sutton chargers and bass and then on the bench he's got chris olave david montgomery kareem hunt kareem uh aj dylan ramondre stevenson and damian pierce rb heavy he is a 10 team league but he is very rb heavy and i absolutely love it love it I mean, I love, I mean, overall, I like this team a lot. You got a mixture of high upside, safe floors. I know Michael Pittman's been somewhat unimpressive here to start the year. We well, got hurt. He was good. And then he got hurt. Right. He's getting back from that. Give him uh, a little bit. Of but time. I think he's got enough pieces here. To, I mean, even if he wants to put Sutton up there at some point, if Pittman doesn't come around to his wide receiver too, yeah. he's got so many options on his bench. I think Ramondre Stevenson is trending up right now. Damian Pierce is somebody that I'd really like to get in my lineup this week if i could honestly i'm almost contemplating putting sutton as my wide receiver too and putting damian pierce in my flex over Pittman. It's wait can you close. say that again for me jake why what i say that part where you said you love damian pierce this week i've loved him for the last two weeks that's why i've had him for a start in my video either. we've we've been on damian pierce the last two weeks me and you wavelength together. i have told 100 or 230,000 people over the last two weeks to start Damian Pierce. That's right. You know, that's right. And it's all because of you, Doug. Uh, hey, I'm just, look. <laughs> no, it's not. You see the stars aligning. You have to make a comment about it. Okay. That's right. But I think this team's really good. I, I even, I wouldn't mind Chris Olave the way he's playing right now. Me neither. For, I mean, I would not mind him sliding up in that wide receiver two spot. Who do they play this week? They got. New Orleans has Seattle. Yeah. I mean, I don't Yeah, That's going to be a shootout possibly. Yeah. Um, we've seen Seattle get into some, some barn burners here in the last couple of weeks. I think we kind of need to see if Michael Thomas is going to play or not first. Yeah. That makes a difference, but I still think Chris Olave could perform uh, well. And I like that he's sitting on your bench. I mean, I do think you could make a move potentially for a, uh, another wide receiver just yep. to kind of insulate yourself as the bye weeks start coming up and, and playing a factor. Uh, it kind of helps you with uh, from an injury perspective too to maybe pick up a guy that's underperforming and hope that maybe you could swing him uh, for a David Montgomery or a, a guy like Ramondre Stevenson, turning him into a high floor wide receiver too. I wouldn't mind that. Um, I would even do that with Damian Pierce. Okay, let's not get crazy now, Jake. I thought we were friends, but now I'm starting to I mean, he's to got Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones already as well. That's true. That's so I true. think you could probably... I, out of all the names on his bench, the one that's carrying the most weight that he could get on the back right now would probably be Damian Pierce because he's been playing so well for two weeks. Yeah, but I don't want to lose that um, piece if that continues. The just volume. If I'm looking at a running back that I want to uh, throw in uh, week to week going forward, I want a guy like Pierce that I know is just basically locked into huge volume. Um, Kareem Hunt, I don't trust him to week to week. David Montgomery, who knows, with Khalil Herbert playing well. I feel like Stevenson or I would even consider trading AJ Dillon at this point, even though you have Aaron Jones, I think we just know for, a, 
AJ Dillon carries more name value than he does actual fantasy value this year, as long as Aaron Jones is healthy. But I really like this team, Jake. I'm going to give it a solid A minus. I think you're competing for championships. Uh, pretty good across the board. Maybe just a little bit of uh, work to do from the wide receiver perspective, but I don't think it's like an immediate need. I just think that it could be later if something were to happen. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm going to give this team an A too. I mean, yeah. the the artwork, the calligraphy, I'll call it here because that is that is calligraphy beautiful. right there. Beautiful. I mean, majestic, beautiful. majestic right there. Uh, overall, the team. I love the running back depth. I love how you have pieces to go out there and make moves if you need. So yeah, overall. That is that is an A submission right there. All right, let's go on to the next one here. We have Joey Daly next, who has the keep pounding Carolina Panthers. Looks like a 22 Christian McCaffrey jersey here. His team name is Ankles. Now, from a doctor's perspective, we just talked about how hard it is to draw feet. How do you <laughs> feel about that foot with that ankle? Do you know what this foot reminds me of, Jake? Truly? Like the Grinch. The Grinch, like, like Cindy Dr. Lou Seuss. Who looking <laughs> yeah. feet, like, is that not a Cindy Lou Who looking foot? If yeah, you've ever seen one. That is, 100%. I'm so glad that you thought exactly. We were freaking, dude, we were right there, <laughs> right there, baby. That looks like a Whoville foot if I have ever seen one. Um. All right, so he's got a 12 team. This is a dynasty team, Ethan. So this is not a redraft team. So this is a dynasty, I love dynasty. team. Uh, he's got the headliner nation with the up and down arrows there. He has at the very end PS forehead kisses on the bottom. I'm thinking that's for you. Um, let's see quarterback. He's got Joe Burrow, Derek Henry, Dalvin cook. So a great start for a dynasty team right here. Oh yeah. And we got Brandon cooks, Christian Kirk. Yep. George Kittle, Deandre yep. Swift, mm-hmm. uh, super Evan McPherson, the yep. bills, mm-hmm. uh, Judy Dotson, Zay Jones, MVS Hayden Hurst and Cordero Patterson right now it's a 12 team dynasty and honestly i low-key really like this team a little bit worried about wide receiver depth for the long haul i mean i like Jahan dotson zay jones is not something i think i can count on long term neither is mvs either uh i guess jerry judy's there as well but starting brandon cooks christian kirk i like it right now but i don't know if i'm going to like it long term jake is brandon misspelled Does Brandon Cooks have an I in his name? Oh, half a point deduction, (laughs) Joey. Uh, Yeah, it's B-R-A-N-D-I-N. Who is Brandon? That's Brandon. That's Brandon. (laughs) Now, that's how you normally spell it. So Joey gets, he only gets a half point deduction, uh, not a full point deduction, because technically that's how a lot of Brandons are spelled, but not Brandon Cooks wise. Yeah. Um, Outside of that, though, I mean, I like this team. I know George Kittle's, you know, coming back off of injury, going to be slow performing for a little bit. DeAndre Swift is hurt right now. So now that you have no DeAndre Swift, you have no Cordero Patterson, I feel like Jerry Judy has to be the guy that he moves up into his flex right now for the short term. Yeah, I don't see anyone else that I'm really feeling great about. Uh, Dotson's hurt. Patterson's hurt. Swift is hurt. Yep. A lot of guys hurt right now, Jake. Uh, I, I'm going to earn my paycheck this week, I'm sure. Are all of them hurt with an ankle injury? Is that why the team name is Ankles? No, nah, Swift has a shoulder. Um, Everybody has a, a shoulder, Ethan. He had a knee scope. Um, and I'd have to look at my notes on Dotson. I don't Dotson has a hamstring something. Is it hamstring? Okay. Yep, he's got a hammy. So, um, so no ankles. So, so where yeah, did the, where sure the team name Ankles come from then? Yeah, where's the ankles coming from? We don't know. Did you notice that I'm pretty sure it's Chris McCaffrey jersey in the background? It is. I mentioned that to begin with. Oh, does he know how much you were listening to on his team, though? Huh? No, he's not on his team. Is that a deduction? Because he didn't really say anything about it. Technically, more of the keep pounding is showing than the 22. True. And he is a Panthers fan, I guess. Yeah. Okay. We'll let it slide this time, but I'm a little concerned that you're not going after your boy. If you have his Jersey, you, you want to know what else is noticeable about this picture, Ethan. And I'm hoping that this is not just a me thing, but yeah. I don't know about you. When I was in school, I used to be pretty lazy when I would shove my notebooks and stuff into my backpack when class was over. Mm-hmm. I can totally this. relate with the crease in this paper in the spiral notebook. Cause I feel like that happens a lot where it gets shoved in there and it folds up 
I feel like I can live with that crease. That crease has my name written all over it. Were you able yeah. to turn in creased paper as a doctor? Uh, no, but you also weren't allowed to write in pencil. So, you know, we have to write everything in pen. That's I pen. This is, that I is pen. Is it pen? That, is, that looks like blue pen to me. Okay. Well, that, yeah, then you're good. Oh, color coordinated. Blue yeah, pen. So color coordinated. Blue even jersey. The binder is blue. Can you see that little? Damn, I binder? didn't even realize that. He's got a, a Panthers colored binder as well. Half point deduction coming right back at him. He's getting his half point back, Ethan. I love it. I think the team is pretty solid, a little weak at, at wide receiver, but I think he's been maxing with those running backs. He is stacked at running back. I think he's still competing, even with Cooks and Kirk, you know, not this year, give yeah, you right now. as much. I think this year for sure, you're still competing with those two guys. I'm going to go with a, a B plus. I think that depth wise on the bench, I would like to see a little bit more, especially in a dynasty league. Short benches, there has to be somebody that you can pick up, um, you know, on your on your bench. The, mm -hmm. the waiver wire has to be flush with guys. Um, I'd be maybe considering some other options besides Jose Jones and MVS. I just don't know how much long term upside those two guys have. Um, the other guys on the bench, obviously, you got to you got to keep a hold of uh, Dotson and Judy. Uh, but everybody else, it's and I'd maybe even consider moving Patterson uh, when he comes back from IR just knowing that it is a dynasty he he does have a shelf life yep all right yeah I agree I think it's a a b plus fringe a minus uh overall love the team long term is how I'm looking at it not just right this second I agree they're a little bit weak on wide receiver all right next one here this one we're breaking the rules a little bit Ethan because our breaking rules the for the last two or three years two years right I think it's two years um, Two years of show us your teams. Yeah, it, you had to have it be handwritten, a handwritten submission. True. But there was some effort put into this, and it Major. was submitted for multiple weeks. So we're showing a little bit of love to Tomatron WYO on Twitter, who has submitted a graphical design type submission. He's included our Twitter handles. He's included his team name, which is Nathaniel Hackett. I love the font choice yeah uh, it looks like mount everest or something in the background yeah we're the coloring top. i like we're the top of the mountain jake that's exactly what that means and that's exactly yep. what he was going for yep uh, there is a parental advisory on this oh, though yeah. so well, of course most of our show should have one it probably right. should um especially if kyle is involved um he's currently three and one it's a 10 man half ppr family league and it says a note on the bottom i traded before the season started montgomery and waddle for Cook and Madison. Before Debo played, I traded AJ Dillon and Hollywood for Debo. So overall, he's off to a good start if he started Debo yeah. Samuel already this week. So now we look at the team and it looks pretty stacked. You Very got Lamar stacked. Jackson. Yep. Great start. Dalvin Cook and Miles Sanders. We know that you just got Cook in that trade to start the year. Uh, Miles Sanders absolutely killing it right now. Maybe to start yeah. the season, you weren't overly excited about it, but it's turned out to be a good thing. Make it happen. Justin Jefferson and Debo. Love that. Mark Andrews. So now you got the Andrews Lamar Jackson stack and Chris Godwin in your flex. Thanks. On your bench, you have uh, the mystery man, Alan Robinson, Travis Etienne, Alexander Madison, Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, Michael Gallup, and now on IR, Javante Williams. Wow. Wow. I feel like he has totally taken advantage of his family members in some way to get a team like this because it's pretty freaking loaded. Uh, it's a good, it's a really good team. I think this is, this is the kind of team that I think you can look at, at even in, in week heading into week five and go, yeah, this team could easily win a championship. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. better teams I've seen, honestly, this year in show us your teams I know he's breaking the rules, so we have to give him a, a minor deduction for that. I still think this is probably an A team overall. And I want to just point out, while this is amazing artwork, did you notice that our pictures are in this photo? Our pictures? We are in this photo, Jake. Even Kyle made an appearance. I'll give Jake some time to find it. This was holy so crap! Subtle. I didn't even realize it, but now didn't even see it. Now I see it. Kyle's in the A. 
Yeah. We're in the AT there at the beginning. Yeah. T for Turner. Makes yep. perfect And sense. then I'm right in the N and the I. I had no idea. What? I didn't even think so to look subtle. inside of there. I don't even know how he fit me in them little letters, but. Well, you do have a pretty big head. It's, it's not the whole thing. I it's mean, he like stopped, had to whole, stop at the forehead. It's the whole thing. It's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, I had no idea. I did not notice that until you just said that. T- top-notch work, really. It's the little things, Ethan. It's it really the little is. things that make us excited. You know, the little things that make us excited, Jake. I don't yeah. know if that's phrased well. We just talked about the parental advisory just not a few, not a few minutes ago. Uh, all right. Much. Overall, there has to be the slight deduction because it's not hand drawn, but then there's yeah. also a slight addition because he's hidden our own pictures inside of the font. So yeah. honestly, because this team is absolutely stacked, you've told us what trades you've made. You told us everything we needed to know on how you came about this team. Team Nathaniel Hackett is an A. It's an A. I agree. And that that's impressive. Do we need to open this up in the future? to graphic design entries or no i feel like we are asking for a lot um not that we have to have those but like if you have them you can submit them really the the key honestly i think the rule is just we don't want screenshots of your team from 100 or my fantasy league or yahoo or whatever league we've seen those platform you use i look at hundreds of those and honestly it's hard for me to like analyze them because i've seen so many that they all just kind of blur together yep. and it's just like man i just don't get any enjoyment out of that so as long as it's custom is what you're saying as long as it's custom and you put in some effort i think you've got a pretty good chance of making it onto this show but i do still prefer a little bit of handwriting because i think that it came about this show segment whatever you want to call it came about in part because we like judging people's handwriting yeah I remember one of the very first ones we ever did, we accused somebody of writing with their left foot. And ever since then, we've just kept it. It's been a a national phenomenon. All right. Last one. Great submission there. This one is lock it in your pocket. I feel like I've been told that before. Uh, There's uh, even a little lock it drawn on the top. But here's the thing. Lock it in your pocket. Were our heads in unison for a second? I feel like for like I half feel a like second. they were. If you thought we they were, were put spent, that comment, dude, dude we're, you, we're attached right now. We are uh, just, okay. We're Melissa just, Merkel is the name here. This is a 20 team half PPR. Who honestly, full disclosure, I have never heard of anyone in a 20 team league before. I've seen it, but it's rare. I've seen I've seen 16 quite often. But 20? Like, 20? I don't that's know. Big. That's that's that's, that's a, a huge squad. league. So let's see what kind of depth there is in a league like that. Uh, starters. Josh Allen. Okay? You're starting off good. Jeff Wilson and Najee Harris. On the surface is good, but Najee just straight struggling right now. And even Kenny Pickett stealing goal line carries from Najee. I mean, as long as he's playing, though, he's better than most running backs that you took in the early rounds. I don't know if I go that far. Well, he's playing. That's something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wide receiver is Tyler Lockett and Jalen Waddle. All right. right. You got George uh, Kittle. Oh, nope. Nope. That's Wakulikli. 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 The D's do not touch. Like the <laughs> I thought about that as soon as you I got, said it. I ain't never seen a man get halfway through a, a word, <laughs> totally a sentence, clicked. and his brain caught up to what his mouth was saying. And you were just like, I ain't never seen the uh, 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 touch. And it's yeah, just, I'm, oh man. That, I just that literally the brain clicked try in to about stop you, but you couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't stop. All right. Couldn't anyway, stop. the yeah, D's we'll, aren't touching. Yep. What we'll, we'll right. cluckle? What we'll cluckle? Cluckle? Oh. Um, George Kittle, Ramondre Stevenson. We got Siebert and the Broncos. And on the bench, you got Geno Smith, Chuba, Raheem, not quite a must-start, Mostert, Jacoby Myers, Alec Pierce, and Isaiah Likely. So there are some players on this team that you probably don't see in normal 10, 12-team leagues, right? And like, not a lot of people have Isaiah Likely or Alec Pierce, maybe even Jacoby Myers, Chuba Hubbard. So you can see there's a little bit of that depth here in a 20-team league. But overall, for 20 teams, I feel that the starting lineup, given the circumstances, is pretty solid. 
I think the team's got a lot of talent for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say what other teams look like. I mean, you're going to the, – the thing about a 20-team league that people have to remember is that in a 20-teamer, you have to take two quarterbacks, even if you're not starting the second one. You kind of get a huge advantage at quarterback week to week, in, even in a one-quarterback setting. Um, or OB in this situation uh, doesn't look like she made a cue there, oh, but out of bounds. Um, Josh Allen is could potentially win you weeks in a 20 team league. Um, I think overall half PPR. So the wide receivers aren't going to matter as much. I would, I would say that uh, for the team that she's you know uh, put together here, I think it's pretty good. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think the team is pretty solid. Top to bottom, you got a good wide receiver, good running back one, some depth at both of those positions. Even Jacoby Myers, I mean, in a half PPR, it's not bad. I mean, it's not a bad right. third wide receiver. Ramondre Stevenson's your RB3. That's not bad in a 20 team league. Um, I wonder if they were drafting Snake or Auction Draft because Auction, I think, makes a huge difference when you get into these size of leagues. The 16 team league I'm in is an auction draft, and it's a lot more fun with an auction because you really have to prioritize it. Uh, a little bit more, but uh, overall, I think the team is good. Um, she's got some some players that can win her multiple weeks by themselves, which right. I think is going to be key. Yeah, Jalen Waddle being one of them. Najee, if he can ever, you know, run forward nowadays. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I like the team. I, I like yeah. the team name, the locket in your pocket. Uh, you made me say something inappropriate on the internet. I mean, that's got to be worth something right there. For yeah. a 20-team league, Melissa, I'm going to give this team – a solid B plus right now, a solid B plus uh, only because if you have any major injuries uh, in your starting lineup, like most teams, I just don't know if you have the depth where you're going to be able to like not skip a beat and get by for a few weeks. I think if you have any major injuries, it's probably going to be a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. I think that's any 20 team league. Probably a hundred percent. Yeah it's hard to even get an a team in a 20 team league. Yeah. I was going to say B just based on the players, but I think in a league like this, where you're playing the, the, the pool of players is so depleted. I think she has enough good players that I'm going to give it a B plus two. Um, I think locking in your pocket uh, is pretty funny. Uh, and you know, we'll clock all, uh, gave me a little chuckle too. Yeah, so, gotta love uh, the we'll, we'll, touch we'll, we'll cockle. Uh, it also has Lockett in the team name and on the roster, so no point deduction yeah. there as well. Awesome. Well, hey, that was week five. That was show us your teams. Remember, what we're looking for is just something custom. You don't have to spend hours, but if you do, you never know. You may just see it here on YouTube. We'll have some fun with it. Hopefully, you guys enjoy show us your team. So for myself and Doc in week five, we'll see you later. Awesome. Yeah. Show us your teams is a lot of fun. If you haven't submitted your team yet, you got to get in on this. You never know when we're going to select your team, your artwork, your masterpiece to be shown right here on YouTube. So even if you don't use Twitter, create the account real quick just to send us the pictures each and every week. And then you can delete it if you want to. You don't have to go out there and tweet. You don't have to follow anybody else. You just got to submit your pictures there. It's one easy place for us to gather all the information. We have a lot of fun doing that every week. Hopefully you enjoy it. I know we get a kick out of that doing show us your teams a lot of laughter a lot of fun which is what fantasy football is supposed to be now me and tater getting together next week got a great recipe for you if you're looking for something to make at an upcoming tailgate we got you covered in next week's episode so make sure you stay tuned but for now i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna kick my shoes off put my feet up put a cold beverage in my hand kick back relax and get ready for week five fantasy football hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day a great weekend and we'll talk to you later